the Cove F450R rally. It's generating a lot of hype. The first models went to social media influencers and they are raving about it. Other riders are saying it's another cheap Chinese bike that will rust, break down or fall apart like earlier Chinese models. Some of the influencers are actually quite well paid, so we watch their <coughs> reviews with a big dose of healthy scepticism. Long-term reliability? We simply won't know until there are lots of independent long-term reports from owners. The quality certainly looks good from initial inspection. Our team did find a few issues with three solid days of riding on three Covert 450 bikes. More on that later. A quick bit of history, the Covert 450 has been created by a Chinese businessman who says he has always dreamed of riding in the Dakar race. Instead, he decided to create a rally bike and send a Chinese team. All three Covert 450s finished the race. A lot of Chinese manufacturers are copying the designs of other brands without permission, but it's good to see the Covert 450 rally appears to be an original design. We aren't sure about their other models though. For example, Covert has an 800 adventure bike that is based on the KTM 790 engine. Copied with permission from KTM? Hmm, we don't know. They also have a 500cc adventure bike which largely copies the Honda CB500X. This is just a rebadged Chinese copy that a pile of manufacturers are rebranding as their own without permission from Honda to copy the engine. Back to the Kobe 450R Rally. Many are hoping it is just a high performance enduro bike with a rally fairing and big tank. These guys will be disappointed with the weight and lack of power. The wet weight is actually more than a Suzuki DR650. Admittedly, the huge fuel capacity of 31 litres is partly responsible, but the Covet still weighs about 145 kilograms without fuel, heavier than a DRZ400. Our test rider, Chuck Harder, assessed the Covet 450R purely from an enduro perspective. I realized that this bike is not at all what I thought it would be. I was expecting this bike to be part of the enduro category, similar to the 450L or RL and the 500EXCF. This power isn't even close to either one of those bikes. If we're putting it in the enduro category, simply put, this thing is a slug. Now keep in mind that I'm coming to this Kove as an enduro rider and not an ADV rider. Compared to a T7 or an 890, this thing feels light but compared to a 450L or a 500, it's a pig. The front end was immediately twitchy in the single track. That front end weight bias caused it to oversteer and tuck in corners and the tall gearing paired with the lack of power meant that I was in first gear where I would normally be in third gear on my 300. The suspension is really good in the wood. I've heard a lot of ADV riders find it very stiff and racy and that makes sense coming from a dual sport rider's perspective. But for an average enduro rider, the suspension is plush enough and holds up well enough to ride aggressively. It is by far the best stock ADV suspension I've ever ridden. My preconceived idea about the category this bike is in is absolutely wrong. This is an adventure bike. It's not a powerful adventure bike, but it's not slow either. It's got enough power. This bike feels like a 300 rally on steroids. It also carries a huge amount of fuel, which is a game changer. This bike might truly be the best of both worlds. If you are a dirt rider, we highly recommend watching Chuck's full video. However, this is not the full story. Our next test rider, Dallas Shannon, assessed the Covet from a dual sport and adventure riding perspective. When people swing their legs over this motorcycle, what happens is they get disappointed in the first, say, two hours on the bike because they think that this race bike is gonna have way more power than a, say, a, a 701 or a 690. This does not have that kind of power. There's always a compromise between power and reliability. Don't fall for guys' first impressions. My first impression was, oh, it's a bit gutless. What's been an issue is, is myself getting used to how this motorcycle delivers the power. Uh, so let's talk quickly about where this motorcycle fits. So we're, we're gonna talk about this segment, which I consider dual sport. 
this bike fits in that segment and I think it fits uh, down here toward the dirt area because it feels like a 450 four stroke. Who's gonna be attracted to this motorcycle? If you're over here, you're going to uh, not like the stock setup of the, the, the suspension and the frame. You'll appreciate both of these things later. It is, this, is a, this is a dirt biker's dual sport bike. If you're racy or if you had a racy background, if you ride fast and you, you know, you're, a, you're an off-road guy or motocross guy, you're gonna love it, except the engine. Interested in the Cove F 450 as a dual sport or lightweight adventure bike? See Dallas's full comments here. A few things contribute to the Cove's potential in this respect. The massive 31 litres or 8 gallons fuel capacity, a healthy 1.6 litres oil capacity for less oil changes, the detuned engine should theoretically last longer, and features such as large radiators, twin radiator fans and an oil cooler should help too. A quick look at the engine. It is not Cove's design. They are using the NC450 engine from another Chinese manufacturer, but in a higher state of tune. It's the Zongshen NC450, which Zongshen use in their own <laughs> hideously ugly RX4 adventure model. Zongshen have also licensed its use in the new Fantic Caballero. It's interesting to see you can buy the entire engine for just 1,900 US dollars in its original detuned mode. The suspension is from Chongqing Yuan, a Chinese company we have never heard of. Their motto, reduce shock and become smooth. The suspension certainly works better <laughs> than the website design suggests. It has been set up for Dakar, so dirt riders will love it. Dual sport riders will probably find it's too firm and may want softer springs and revalving. Kove have opted for Japanese brakes from Nissan and Bosch EFI made in Europe. With their focus on reliability, it would be interesting to see if they couldn't find reliable Chinese parts in this respect. What problems did we experience over three days with three Covert 450s? A small oil leak from the oil cooler and also a fuel leak through an overflow pipe. Easily fixed. We suspect we were to blame as we assembled these bikes from the crate. There was a small electronic glitch with the speedo and we would get an overheat warning signal when nothing was wrong. And if the covert goes on its side, there is some kind of cutoff switch which doesn't allow the covert to be restarted immediately. We think the last two issues will be very minor glitches that will probably be resolved quickly. What about long-term problems? We simply won't know for at least a year until some owners have high mileage and can provide independent reports. The big concern, of course, will be whether Covert has taken shortcuts, such as inferior grades of metal for engine components, as previous Chinese manufacturers have often done. What happens if Covert fails as a brand? Could you end up with a useless hunk of metal if you can't buy parts? The good news is you can at least buy the original Zongshen engine in its very detuned form. And with luck, Covert are using components that are used on other Chinese models. You may not be left stranded if the company goes out of business. What about parts availability? Dealer support. Dealers will be few and far between for a while. I suspect you will be able to order parts from overseas if needed. Only time will tell how things work out. Of course, many riders simply don't want to buy Chinese products because of political and or ethical reasons. I completely understand some riders don't want to indirectly support a communist regime. But at least on the ethical side, this Covert 450 doesn't appear to illegally copy other manufacturers. Although I have some doubts about the other Covert models. So, are you chasing the elusive do-everything unicorn bike? Will the Cove Air 450R rally suit you? After a chat with my Canadian cousins, we decided the Cove Air fits on the Enduro Adventure Spectrum here. If you want a seriously light unicorn bike, you may just need a serious Enduro model and add the required parts and mods. 
but the Covair potentially covers quite a lot of the spectrum due to its huge fuel capacity, windscreen, detuned engine and hopefully an emphasis on reliability. What do you guys think? Could it suit you? Dallas and Chuck will provide further insights as they ride the Covair more. Watch out for their bids.